Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So autumn has finally arrived, and that means that the tour is in order. So I'm going to try not to drag this video out too long, so let's just dive right into it. Alright, so I'm going to start with uh, what will likely be next week's feature, which is this Calypso Red Love Red Fleshed Apple variety. You can see here, I am waiting for this beautiful apple to ripen. Very good color. I'm really excited to try this. It's not the biggest, as you'll get to see in a minute, but it looks beautiful. Plus, we got strawberries. Still producing, which is great. Although, I'm gonna have to take this guy out, likely. Next up is this Odisso apple. Also a red fleshed apple. We got real big, just like the other one. However, the apples got a much larger size. Like, look how beautiful those look. Good size, beautifully red. I have really high hopes for this one. And I'll talk about, when we go to taste the Calypso, the other variety that I just showed you, why that apple didn't get quite as big. There's a couple factors that play into that. But either way, I'm really excited about this one. I think the other one will also be really good as well. But the other one does ripen first before this one. This one is likely to ripen somewhere in October. And here I'll also have to remove uh, one of the strawberries and probably a couple adjacent ones where we're going to plant that hula berry that I got as well. So I'll have all the varieties within my containers. Same thing with the other one. And here is the last Red Love variety called Ira. Oh, it got very tall. Definitely have to do a little bit of pruning on this one, but I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be doing to it. It didn't fruit, it did flower, but that's okay. It is only its first year uh, producing fruit. It's only its second year in my care, so that's not a problem. Overall though, doing very, very good. And right next to it is my multi-grafted pear. Starting to lose its leaves. The apple's holding on to it a little longer. Got a nice color to them, I gotta say. It's nice. But also doing very well, growing nicely. It has a lot of spurs on here. You can see those will probably uh, develop next year. So it's looking good. Not too many strawberries at the base, but I'll definitely be planting a hula berry there as well. This little friend that I just noticed. I think he's staring at this garden orb weaver right there. I think he wants to eat him up. I have those types of frogs and also uh, tree frogs. The tree frogs especially, I think, are the ones that croak like crazy. But they're all very beneficial because they eat a bunch of bad insects. Although this, I would argue, is very, very beneficial. So I definitely don't want to have him eat it, but you know, that's the cycle of life, right? It's good to have around, both of them. Still got some flowers going off. I'm trying to let these uh, echinaceas go over a little bit just so I can uh, take the seed and spread that around a little bit, a little bit as well. Because they're uh, a native, really beneficial. Just got some roses that are flowering. Really like these guys, they are color changing. Smell really good too. Got some more coming on. Strawberries in the bottom. This beautiful fig, which are growing nicely, forming. I uh, could have bought some figs in the store, but I purposely didn't because I've never had a fresh fig before. And I really just want to try my homegrown ones, get the real experience. There's a bunch of them on here and I'm really, really excited. There's more back there too. So yeah, exciting. The next one is this lemon. Put on a whole bunch of new growth. Looks very, very healthy, very good. Very excited about this guy doing really well. But the other one that's doing really well here is this Meyer lemon. And they're ripening, getting some good color on them. I'll be trying those in the video as well. I've never had a Meyer lemon before, let alone homegrown, so. That'll be fun. Here is my lemon tree that I grew from a seed that just absolutely exploded in growth over the last couple of weeks. 
it looks beautiful and I won't be pruning any of this because you want them to be pretty big and bushy to overwinter them especially if you live in a colder area like I do it's mild but cold it's still temperate so you still want that all that foliage to insulate this uh, that your lemon your citrus in general but uh, the homegrown one actually suffers more from cold damage than any of my other citrus so this one is very beneficial to leave it nice and bushy here are my jalapenos big full of jalapenos i mean during this time of year i just have so many jalapenos i don't even know what to do with it well i trust me i'll eat them <laughs> that's what i'll be doing with it but i got so many it's absolutely awesome now these will have to come inside here probably within a couple of weeks so i will be pruning them making another video about that i did one last year as well but i'll just uh be showing the process again can never have enough examples these are absolutely delicious too i love homegrown jalapenos this year i'm going to try something new which is to overwinter a tomato so i put this purposely in a clay pot i uh, started them real late i really had no intention of trying to grow them but i decided to just start with some anyways i'll just be trying to overwinter them so that should be pretty interesting I got a nice, beautiful, might I add, habanero, just flowering. Again, started pretty late, but that's all right. I'll just be overwintering this. These are really perennial, so I'm not bothered at all by overwintering them and just having them for next year. But I'll still get some, probably some small habaneros off of this. Right next to it is something that's called a boonie pepper, which I guess is a Filipino pepper. It's really cool as well. They're beautiful, growing really well. I've got an extra one of both right there. Don't know what I'll be doing with it, but we'll see. Here's a Thai basil that I didn't make a video about, even though I should have. I got a little cutting and uh, it took off. It's doing really, really well. And I got to say, these leaves are delicious. They taste like licorice. I love that flavor. So I'll definitely be letting this Thai basil get nice and big and enjoy basil all year round because these are perennial these don't die off like uh, your regular basil does you can also let them flower and they won't die so they're super cool here is some citrus that I'll be overwintering so this great big one is a kumquat it's doing pretty well got scalded by the heat wave it's all the damage that you see on the leaves doesn't really hurt it it's not a big deal then over here is a Meyer lemon. It's doing uh, pretty good. Struggled for a little while. I have an actual Meyer lemon, so I don't even know if I really need it, but I'll just grow it out anyway. It doesn't really matter. This is an orange. Also doing really well. Got some good growth on it. And right next to it is another one that's doing excellent, which is a mandarin. Really nice. I really want a blood mandarin. If I can find it, I'll definitely uh, be growing that along with uh, the cultivar kumquat variety. And my cacti are kind of in the back because they kept falling over, or at least one of them always did. So I put the <laughs> citrus in front of it. All right, so there's the yasta berry, the blanca white currant, and the red lake red currant. And then this is the one that I don't know the variety of. All doing really well. You can see how the strawberries on that red current just completely took over the bottom there. That's kind of what I want. I really want that to be a ground cover, protecting the soil, you know, protecting it from the sun hitting on it. So that's kind of what I want. But they all need to be pruned, which I'll all make videos about. And then also a little sneak peek, I suppose. I had a uh, random pop up in my white currant here so I'll have to dig that up in a little while uh, once it completely dies off that's one of the reasons why I know that I harvested my red, red potatoes too early is because I still have this going so learning lesson but that's okay I still have I'll still get some potatoes out of here I'll just have to be careful that I don't disturb the roots too much of course you can see I am getting strawberries which is nice it's one of the you know that one got eight looks like it's kind of the perk of having an ever-bearing 
variety. You know, you'll still get strawberries way up into autumn, which is great. I love that about it. Here are my apples and pears that I grew from seed. They're all doing pretty good, and I've got those apples on that uh, apple seedling back there. They're not growing that quick. I'm not really sure if they'll ripen in time. I mean, they might. I'm just leaving them there to do their thing. I uh, think one of the reasons why they took so long is because it's in a very small pot. I will probably up-pot this this year, this winter. So that'll be uh, something I'll do. Here are my hardy kiwis. I made a little trellis for this uh, self-pollinating variety. I can think of the top of my head what it is called right now. And here's my Ken's Red hardy kiwi. Look at that, it got real big. This is gonna need a bigger trellis for sure. And then right next to it is my Spartan blueberry. No more blueberries on it. We ate them all, they were delicious. It doesn't really need pruning, but there's just a couple things that I might want to do, you know, it's a little bit of shaping is okay. So I'll probably be doing that this winter, make a video about it. Same thing with this pink lemonade blueberry. It grew beautifully, produced a bunch of blueberries. They were absolutely delicious, really happy about it. And you see all the strawberries on the bottom there. Same thing, I'll probably have to take one of these strawberries out, probably along this corner here, so I'll have Pineberry, Pineberry, Quinault. You see how the different leaf color is. It kind of gives it away. I'll probably put that hula berry somewhere over here. I kind of want to have a hula berry in, you know, the majority of my pots. Just because I think they'll be really good. Here's my black satin blackberry. We'll also need some old canes removed in favor of the newer ones. Next to my blackberry. I have my red heritage raspberry and you can see lots of little raspberries those are just so good I had to um, kind of go like this where I tied it up because I'm worried about the rain the rain was really pushing down canes and I'm also worried about snow possibly breaking them so that's why I tied it up just to make sure that that doesn't happen these smaller ones I'll probably remove in favor of the bigger ones because it is growing in a container. You can't have too much, too many canes mixed in together, but I'll probably make a video about that too. Kind of the same deal with my fall gold raspberry here. This one is starting to branch out because it's only got planted last year. You can see how it's uh, spreading out a little bit. If I take out some of these smaller ones, that'll favor it going out a little further as the roots spread over the course of winter. So that'll be good. And we all know that those fall gold raspberries are delicious. Here are all my four varieties of strawberry all in, them, in their own pots. They're all doing very well. But then I also have, of course, more strawberries right here. They're also doing good. Inside of the plant, a tomato because, and again, this started real late. It, it's probably not gonna produce anything because the temperature's already dropping and the house is blocking the sun over here. So I don't know, we'll see what, what it does. I have another one that I'm bringing inside. So it's growing pretty good though. It's uh, looking very healthy. So that's a good thing. This is my potato planter that has the uh, crimson clover cover crop in it. I had to, just real quick as well, I had to reseed this because it was too dry when I planted it initially, so I had to put some more in there. And another pot full of strawberries. See some flowers there. I um, will likely have to take a quinault out of the center here. because There's like three that are just too large. And they're just taking up too much space in here. Um, so if I want to plant something in here, I'll have to remove that. But that's fine, I'll have more strawberries elsewhere. A little wildflower area, plus another tomato that decided to come up from my little compost container that I just use to, you know, use as a, like a compost container and everything just kind of gets thrown in there and it breaks down. And of course, that includes tomatoes, which means you'll get a tomato seedling every once in a while. 
But it's growing pretty good, actually. I'll just leave it. Can't really hurt anything. All right, here's where I have a couple of potted house plants that I've had outside all growing season. And that includes this beautiful coffee tree. I really enjoy this tree. It just looks absolutely beautiful. And it grew a lot this year as well. I definitely like having that around. Right next to it is a Norfolk Island pine, which grew pretty good. Got a little sun damage initially uh, from the, just the sun being too bright, but it recovered pretty well. And then over here, I have a mango tree that's growing very slowly. It always has, I it needs more sun, I'm sure. So I'll have to put it in the front yard next year. This right here is an argan tree. It's beautiful and thorny. <laughs> and then next to it is an avocado that grew big and beautiful. I really like the look of this as well. It just looks, I mean, it is a subtropic, right? Or tropical, but it looks beautiful. I just love the look of it. And they grew pretty big. I had another one, but it unfortunately died right next to it. Here's a giant sequoia, coastal redwood. Uh, this is my everlasting supply of green onion. Rosemary, which grew pretty big. It needs a bigger pot. It really just needs more space because it dries out like crazy, super quick. Um, bunch of propagations, strawberries to plant out. Yeah. That's about this for this area. All right, so that was the early autumn tour. Uh, there's always something really exciting about the new season. And I, for one, love autumn. I love the change of scenery and the color of the leaves and the cooler mornings, cooler nights, stuff like that. And you still get all the harvests. But another thing that I really enjoy is just putting, you know, containers to rest for the season, you know, mulching everything, topping everything off and all that type of stuff. I just really enjoy it. So I hope you all do too. I hope you're getting all good harvests this year and I'll see you in the next one. Tot de volgende keer. This time in the backyard. It's just another common frog. Surprisingly not a tree frog, which is what I normally see in our back and front yard, but I'll take the regular frogs too. They eat small slugs, which is really the big thing that I want them to eat because there's so many of them. A really cool print on them as well.